Hey, all right, let's hope this phone keeps uh, working right. All right, here we go, man. This is another beautiful verse, and uh, I man, and I really don't know how he just throws a man. I mean, it's just spontaneous. It's just, but I know it's him because I can feel his presence. I mean, really feel that just like an electrical shock almost, like from all the way down my spine through my body. Yeah, I know when he's talking to me. And uh, anyways, besides all that. It's a beautiful thing. And uh, this is Exodus, and man, this is part of the uh, Ten Commandments. Um, Exodus 20, verse 3. And uh, first I'll read it the way it is in our language, you know, as most of us read it in our Bibles, and then take every single word, get a little deeper understanding uh, back to its origin, now that we have a much better understanding and a bit larger vocabulary with more descriptive terms, we're able to... Uh, get a better understanding of these ancient languages. So here we go, and I'm using my sword on my Android phone. So thou shalt have no other gods before me. Okay, here we go. Um, short verse, but full of revelation. And that's what he's doing now, revealing the truth. All right, following another, so to follow another, uh, further to hinder man, to delay, to delay, causing to stay behind, but not in hope. Staying behind, but not in hope. By a procrastination of the Elohim, the angels, gods with a small g, or goddesses. A false god, or a deity. Men of rank, of demons' imaginations. A great political leader, a great political leader, an idol, or an idol, a mighty terebinth tree, and uh, that has significant meaning, and I'm going to go into that in a minute. And then it says the body, which is the body that's rolled and twisted together. I mean, think about our DNA strands and stuff, right? Chains that bind us. Yeah, so... Um, Demons, imaginations that lead and govern the thoughts of the mind through the flesh is what this is saying, basically. That's hindering us by a procrastination to make a decision. But they are caught. It's From what I see here, it's calling us Elohim, angels, gods, with a small g, or goddesses, part of the supreme god. Uh, a false god, which is a false god or deity. And then uh, apparently there's a... a a man, a, a political leader that's coming, a great political leader. Anyways, and this is a face, a face from before time. So this is a face from before time, which is part of what has trapped us here, time. Because beyond here, once we're set free of this place, time is irrelevant. And time is irrelevant to God. Where we came from, time was irrelevant. <laughs> okay. Um, before time, as the part that turned, as a part. So this is a face before time, as a part, as a part of a whole that left, a part that turned against, that turned our backs to and listened to another, that hindered us, right? Against as long, a part that turned against as a long battle, a long battle to favor fear from the heaviness, the burden that's placed upon us of old, out of the presence, and I think that means out of the presence of God, by reason to serve themselves, to be self-serving, to serve ourselves. We've been upside down within, you stand. So to serve themselves upside down within, within you. And then it says stand, stand, to stand. Okay, so we're, we're turned upside down, born backwards, into this world upside down it says it, within us within this idol okay so hopefully that <laughs> hopefully that shed some light on some things um but this this there are two mighty trees in the garden right the the tree of life and the tree of the knowledge of good and evil okay now um god is referred to as a strong oak a mighty tree and of uh, this turbulence tree terebinth tree. 
when you research that, it says it's divine, but it's lacking a clear distinction. It's from the divine because everything is created by God. Okay, It was part of the divine, so it was there in the garden, but it lacks a clear distinction. It has um, red berries, red, it's red, and it's in a place of Palestine, which is the enemies of God. That's what that is, the Pal Palestine enemies of God of a great age, of a great age, this tree, it's always single, single, self-serving, serving ourselves, right? A tree in which Absalom was caught, and the Bible says we're all caught in Satan's snare, so Absalom was caught in this tree, and uh, it's express, expressly of an idol shrine, of an idol shrine, I think that's referring to our body, as a fading and withering tree that is hewn down and cast down. And there's a weird word here that I don't even know how to pronounce. It's D-E-C-I-D-U-O-U-S. Deciduous. Which means it's shedding leaves. It's shedding leaves. Falling down. Or a, 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 a pinnate, pinnate, which is leaves on either side of a stem. So if they're opposites, it says, opposites of each other, uh, having branches like uh, a bird's feather, like a vein, that's vein, that spreads out, okay? And, uh, and it references Hosea 4.13, which means cut, uh, committing adultery and burning incense to idols on a high place under this turbinate tree. So it was used to uh, apparently create idols, our bodies and um, look at the word image in Genesis 126 like I screwed up on the last verse I said that related to Elohim age 430 but it, it was and I made a note and I pinned it but it was referring to our image in Genesis 120 especially an idol a vain show a phantom and, and look this is mentioned in multiple multiple verses throughout the Bible people <laughs> I wish people would get it but man refuses to believe it and refuses to believe it. It's, it's, it's hard to realize that we were there and we disobeyed our father and we were cast out and born into this temporal place, this physical place in time to be tested and tried as a purification system. And he knew this was going to occur because he knows you know, children are got to be raised up in the way they should go. Children have to be that way. And we had to be the same way, all of us. And look at the problems we caused our parents, right? The trouble we got in. So, you know, and he knew that was going to happen. That's why he, Jesus Christ, was the first of all creation. Because he knew and he was created for that purpose to come into this world in the likeness of this simple flesh to uh, reveal the truth, to show us who he is. He's our creator and our loving father, and he, there's no greater show of love. Look, when we came into this world to gain the knowledge of good and evil, don't forget, not just evil, it was good as well to gain that knowledge by experience, by experiencing it personally. Like we couldn't attain and fully understand the answer by direct questions like I see in so many verses in the Bible. It's, it's not attainable by direct questions and an affirmative answer. We needed to experience it, and we wanted to experience it, which God forbid, because he knows how strong the delusion and lie is. And um, once we're here, it becomes very self-serving, and we become our own gods, our own idols, and we idolize other people and men and movie stars and political leaders, and, and we follow them. They become our rulers, and we're enslaved. We're, en we're enslaving ourselves by our own, <laughs> our own ignorance, basically. We're all enslaved. We live in Babylon. We live in the land of Egypt. But once you're reconciled back to your father through his only begotten son, Jesus Christ, who is God, who manifested himself in the likeness of sinful flesh, he is his word incarnate. And he came to reveal himself and to reveal the truth and tell us who he is that, and show us how much he loves us. Um, and, and, re, and he also is revealing in every book of the Bible, every book, who we are as well. We're all his children. But when you reject them, now you're of your father of this sinful nature, this flesh. And we've taken on that. By our, and it says by our own conceit, excessive pride. And what we think we know. 
what we were taught by men, you know, and I'm not going to say intentionally that Elohim, you know, concealed, concealed it, and Christ came to reveal the light. But men love darkness rather than light. They love this world. They love the things of it. They, they accumulate their treasures here in this temporal world, you know, and it's, it's, it's just sad that the majority, Christians, Christians, reject this vehemently. The majority of them. But it's right there in every single book of the Bible. I wish they would look. And that's what he's asked me to do. And I'm, and I'm realizing that. He's, he's called me out to, to point these things out, to agitate and stir the minds of men and women, you know, mankind, um, to, to say, wait a minute, this ain't right. You know, and I'm not the only one. There are people long before me doing this. And uh, it's, it, what, it's what stirred my mind and caused me to really start looking into it. And then he started to really speak to me and reveal things and lead and guide and direct me. And I started to hear his voice more and more and feel his presence. And, you know, it's the way it goes. And uh, I'm, I'm willing to follow him anywhere. <laughs> anywhere. Do anything he asks me to do. But he's going to have to give me the power, the faith, and the ability to do it. I know that. I can't do nothing on my own. That's worth a crap. <laughs> all right. All right. So there it is. Uh, I hope we got more revelation out of that. And he's already given me several other verses that I went over. And man, it's beautiful. So I'm always pressed for time. I work at 12 hours. Sucks. It's a blessing and a curse at the same time in a way. But anyways, God bless you all. Love and respect everybody. Have a great day. Um, uh, I know if you watch Dutch and I's and uh, Banu and all these other brothers and sisters in Christ, things that are happening within the earth itself. It's ready to give birth. It's ready to give birth. It's about to burst open. There's, there's definitely rumbling that's going on. Like, everybody's going to have to be shaken to the core. And what man perceives as evil and bad, what Satan means for evil, God means for good. And it's to wake everybody up. It's to finally wake everybody up, no matter what the cost, because this world is temporary. We are not our bodies. We are trapped inside this body. And the only time we're set free from it is when we get to go home. But he, he has a purpose for all of us. And I know we all face a lot of tough thoughts and decisions, especially since all this is happening, and it's going to get harder, but stay strong, stay firm, continue in his word, let's finish this race strong, right, so God bless, have a great day, bye.